Okay, so this is a reaction of different metals with water. So I'm going to start off with uh, this one, which we looked at a few minutes ago, uh, which is uh, sodium metal, remember, stored under oil to keep it away from moisture and air. So the first step is to take the uh, chunk of sodium out of the oil and then dry it off to get rid of the oil. Because uh, if I try and mix it, uh, add it to the water at the moment, the, the water won't get to it. So uh, pop that back in there and then dry this off. And then I'm going to pop it in this trough of water. Okay, so uh, it's a nice shiny uh, 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 grey metal. And then pop it on here. And the weird thing is that, first of all, you'll notice is that metal and water, it floats. And it uh, then melts into a tiny little ball, uh, which just sits on the surface of the water and then starts to sort of propel itself around the surface of the water. So it's giving off a gas as it moves around, fizzing, uh, and a uh, little bit of steam coming off as well. There's a big chunk, so it's taking a while to disappear, but it is getting smaller and smaller, and moving across the surface. Okay, it doesn't seem to be leaving anything behind. Um, the, the, the water is still uh, colourless and, and clear. There doesn't seem to be any obvious change there. So it's obviously producing a gas, but it's not immediately obvious that it's producing anything else uh, as it reacts. Um, so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of uh, indicator to this mixture. Um, so this, we're going to use universal indicator solution. So uh, if the water is neutral, the, the indicator should stay green. Uh, if the water has become acidic, it'll go uh, uh, orange or red. And if it's, uh, the water has become alkaline, it'll go blue or, or even purple. So uh, um, put some of this in here and see what happens. Um, and it's going very dark blue. Uh, you, I'm going to go bucket chemistry. Here we go. We're going to put a lot in here so we can see the color. Uh, so that's an inky, it's almost purple. There you go. You can see that purple color in there. Uh, so it's obviously a very strongly alkaline solution uh, that's been formed as one of the products of this reaction of sodium with water. Okay, um, so it's just spreading out to the side. So that was sodium with water. Uh, so we're going to uh, look at uh, another metal now. We're going to—I'll move that one out of the way—and uh, we're going to go on to uh, uh, calcium with water instead. I don't need the bowl for this. I'm just going to put some calcium. Uh, in, a, in a boiling tube here. Uh, so calcium is, uh, comes as small chunks of metal uh, and I'll just put one or two of these. I'll just put one in there. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that. Uh, it's immediately fizzing again uh, and floating. It seems to be floating uh, and so a gas being given off, a colourless gas being given off, it's dissolving away there. Uh, and now it's all gone. I'll just touch that and see if I can... F no, it's not too hot. I'll put another bit in. There we go. So it sinks to start with and then bubbles like crazy. And the bubbles of gas uh, buoy it up to the surface. Okay, uh, so it's bubbling away. Uh, nicely in there. So quite a vigorous reaction of calcium with water, but maybe not quite as, as vigorous as the, uh, as the sodium one. The other th no difference you might notice is that the, the, what it's leaving behind is a, is a cloudy uh, suspension rather than a colourless solution. So uh, something, uh, the product might be s uh, slightly different. It's not as soluble. Whatever the product is, it doesn't dissolve as well. So I'll put some uh, indicator in there as well and see if we've got any uh, change there. So remember, we're looking for purple for alkaline, red for acid. So put that in there uh, and ooh, like that. Uh, obviously, a very strongly alkaline uh, solution from calcium uh, with water. OK, we're going to go for magnesium next. So magnesium strips. So put a couple of these in uh, a boiling tube of water uh, and uh, see what happens. 
So they sink and they sit there. And give it a swirl, give it a chance, see if it's going to get going. Nothing doing. Okay. So in general, when nothing happens uh, in a chemical reaction, the next thing you want to do is, oh, that's what happens if we heat it and see if we can persuade it to do something instead. Uh, so just light up a Bunsen. Okay. And ooh, I'm going to get something to hold it with. So here we've got some uh, tongs. Pop it in there. And actually, I'm going to put some indicator in this first. Um, see if there's anything, any sign of anything happening. So pop some indicator in there. And it's green. Uh, see, we can see if we can change that by giving it a bit of a blast. Okay, so uh, room temperature water, no reaction. And then let's see if we can get it uh, to do anything. Now, of course, as soon as you heat water, um, it might start to start to boil. So you might see some bubbling. Uh, but is that the, the reaction or is that just the water boiling? You have to uh, be a bit careful. So the trick to that is that once it starts to boil, I, I can actually feel it bumping a little bit. Okay, you might be able to hear it. If you take it out of the flame and let it cool down a little bit so it's not being directly heated and then see if it, the reaction still takes place. Uh, so there's the, oh look, the magnesium's floated to the top now. So the reason for them, and when I, when I give it a knock, it sinks back down. So the reason for it floating to the top is it's getting uh, it bubbles on it. Okay. So that's, whoa, okay. So it's out of the flame. Is it still bubbling? Okay, so I'm not holding it in the flame and it's bubbling a bit. What about the color? Okay, do you think it might be going a little bit more blue in color? Started off quite a nice green color. Is that a bluey green or is that still? So we'll give it another go. Okay, it doesn't take much to kick it off. Okay. Woo. Okay. So I'm going to leave that and come back to it in a bit, but I think that's got a darker uh, uh, color to it. I think it's heading more towards the blue end rather than the, uh, the yellow end of green. So we're going to come back to it. We've given it a bit of a heat uh, and uh, we'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, uh, then we're going to go, go copper, or iron, sorry, iron is the next on the list, my mistake. So again, we've got uh, iron filings, finely divided iron rather than uh, an iron nail. Of course, remember, when you finely divide something, you increase the surface area. So. Uh, it could be that it's, it's more likely to react as a powder than it would be if it was a, a single chunk of stuff. So put that in, give it a shake, and look for any bubbling. Nothing doing. Can't see any bubbles there. I'm going to put a little bit of indicator in again, see if it makes any change. That's a nice green colour. Oh, hello. A little comparison. There you go, look. That was the, uh, the magnesium one. It's definitely slightly away from the green towards the blue. Maybe I'm just being hopeful. And then uh, give this, again, a bit of a heat. See if there's any uh, impact on warming it up. Okay, so it's bubbling because it's hot now. The water at the bottom is starting to boil. Doesn't seem to be carrying on doing that when I take it out of the flame. Okay. Okay, it doesn't seem to be, no, can't spot any bubbling. So I'm going to leave that one there. And then try the last one on our list, which is copper. Same again. Put some copper in. Sinks to the bottom. 
doesn't seem to do much. Put some indicator in. And then give it a bit of a blast. See if we can persuade it to do something. Okay, so this isn't quite a fair test, is it? Because I've got pieces of copper, big chunks of copper, uh, where I was using powdered iron and I was using uh, strips of magnesium ribbon uh, and uh, granules of calcium. So it's not quite a fair test in that I'm not doing the same thing each time, not having the same state of subdivision of the metal. Okay, so we've got it boiling. Give it a swirl. And then, ooh, that seems to be doing a little bit, doesn't it? Okay. Not sure if that's still boiling or whether that's, uh, that's reaction. It's died down again, so maybe that was just boiling. Okay, there's no bubbles on it anymore. So presumably that's not reacting. And then if we just have a little look at these in turn again. So that was the calcium. Oh, you can see all that stuff that's sunk down to the bottom. The precipitate that was formed has started to sink down to the bottom, that white stuff there. Um, this is the magnesium. That's definitely got a very blue, I don't know if you can see that, a blue tinge against my, uh, my lab coat rather than being green. That's still green. And that's still green and hot. Ouch. Uh, so uh, I've got a feeling that uh, these ones are the only two out of those that reacted uh, clearly. Okay. So that was uh, reactions of metals with start off with cold water and then we uh, went up to hot water to try and make it, uh, make it work. We can get hotter than hot water, though. Hot water, at the top limit for temperature of water is 100 degrees C, okay? But you can get water into a higher temperature state, of course, by turning into steam. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do now, is uh, heat a metal in steam, okay? So this is a little bit of kit where we've got uh, some magnesium, uh, a curl of magnesium sitting in a boiling tube here. And down here we've got some uh, uh, glass wool with some water in it. So the water and the, uh, the, uh, the magnesium are not touching. Okay. And then at the end of the tube we've got a little vent, a, a glass tube coming out. I don't want a sealed system because I'm going to heat this. And if I seat, heat, it a seal, heat a sealed system, uh, okay, it's going to, it's going to, uh, gas pressure is going to build up and it's going to explode. So I'm going to heat the magnesium get it nice and hot and then I'm going to heat the water down here. The water is going to turn to steam so we're going to pass steam over hot magnesium uh, and see what happens there. So we managed to get magnesium to react with hot water but it's not terribly spectacular. What happens if we try and get magnesium to react with with steam instead? Okay so I'm going to clamp it uh, near the uh, top of the tube because that's the bit that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be heating it lower down. So there we go, we'll clamp it there and get it to the right height. Now I'm going to move the Bunsen around. So if you were doing this, you, we wouldn't uh, want you moving Bunsen's around. From uh, You should just set the Bunsen going and then, then leave it. But uh, I'm going to just uh, move the Bunsen from one place to another. So I'm going to heat it really strongly here. Okay, you can hear the roaring Bunsen flame. And get the magnesium nice and hot and then every now and again I'm just going to move the flame down and get the water turning to steam so I'm going to alternate heat it here nice and strongly and then give it a bit of steam okay. Oh, hello, here we go. And I don't know if you've noticed there, but I just lit the flame at the end, or the gas jet that was coming out at the end. 
Okay, so whatever was coming out at the end, at the top nozzle there, okay, was a flammable gas. I'm going to turn that off because the tube is cracked now. Okay, so just got it going here in this area here, just started to get hot and start to glow. And then when I heated it down here, uh, we get a lot more steam coming over and it really takes off. And the jet of gas which is coming off here is flammable because I could lit it with the Bunsen flame and we had a, a brief time when there was a, a jet coming out of the end. Uh, the problem is that sometimes the, the water uh, hits the hot glass here and we end up with uh, um, the end of it breaks off. So uh, luckily it didn't, uh, didn't shatter when I, until I wanted it to. Okay, so we can get uh, magnesium to react with steam and it gives us uh, this white uh, residue inside the tube. I don't know if you can see inside the tube there, it's, re it's, it's white. There's a black mark on the tube, but basically we've made a white material uh, in here on the surface, which I can scrape off. See that white stuff coming out of there? Okay, so this is uh, a white compound of magnesium that must have come from magnesium plus steam. So if you work it out, magnesium plus steam, remember steam is H2O, has got to produce a white solid of a magnesium compound and a flammable gas. Well, if the flammable gas is hydrogen, so hydrogen from the, from the water has, has come out here, so the oxygen from the water has stuck to the magnesium. So what we've got here is magnesium oxide, which is a white solid uh, and hydrogen. Okay. Uh, so we can get magnesium to react much more in a much more spectacular way with uh, uh, steam uh, than we could uh, trying to get it just with, with hot water. And of course, the reason is that steam is way, way hotter than 100, whereas the, I can only get this to 100 degrees C. Uh, 